40 years of busting would make anyone tired, but we all still know who you're gonna call. Hey everybody, welcome to Mainly Movies. Today I'm going to be ranking the five films of the Ghostbusters franchise as part of my franchise rankography series. If you're new here, please consider subscribing for a variety of movie related content like reviews, rank lists, and trailer reactions. So what is a rankography exactly? Well, it's my ranking of a filmography, whether that be a director's output, an actor's appearances, or even an entire franchise. My rankographies are based on personal preference, and I rank movies according to how much I enjoyed them, rather than any specific technical merit or attribute. Remember, this is just my ranking, not THE ranking, so be sure to post your own personal ranking of the Ghostbusters franchise in the comments below. Ghostbusters is a franchise I've enjoyed since I was a little kid. For the majority of my life, there were only two films, plus the cartoon, but I watched those movies a lot growing up. Nowadays, I certainly wouldn't consider them to be horror movies, but they were kind of spooky as a kid, and I loved that. I was interested in horror and horror-tinged movies and shows from a pretty young age, and I was especially fascinated by the concept of paranormal investigation. So it comes as no surprise that I was drawn to this franchise at a young age and still keep coming back to it. I've already reviewed all five of these movies on this channel, so if you want to check those out for some more in-depth thoughts on each of them, I'll put links in the description below, and also link them up in the cards as we go along. Alright, let's get this rankography started. Coming in at number five, Ghostbusters, the 2016 reboot. So even now, I still really go back and forth on this pick, because my two lowest Ghostbusters films are about equal in my mind, just for different reasons. But I decided to keep this reboot in the number five spot, and I have a feeling that's a pretty common placement for it. I do want to say, though, that I don't hate this movie. Even though it's last in the ranking for me, I still sort of like it. It's not great or anything, but it's entertaining, and kind of just one of those movies that I don't mind having on. It's not one that I'll ever actively seek out, but if it's on TV or somebody else wants to watch it, I don't have a bad time with it, and as a reboot, it's honestly okay. This is a film that was completely enveloped by controversy when it came out, and for months and months before it ever came out. It was viciously and toxically maligned for no reason other than the fact that many people were upset that it existed. I think a lot of people would have rather had a Ghostbusters 3, and I get it. I would have preferred a third film over this one too, but I still thought this was reasonably entertaining. The villain and story are a little underdeveloped, but it does pose some interesting supernatural concepts with the ley lines and ghostly plane. The humor is really hit or miss for me, mostly just because I'm not a huge fan of the improv style comedy used here. But I do really like the characters, specifically the four Ghostbusters. They're a fun group with some good chemistry and character dynamics, and I think there's a nice distinction between them and the original Ghostbusters. Coming in at number four, Ghostbusters 2. This movie has always been a weird one for me, even within this strange franchise. For years, I've gone back and forth on how I actually feel about it, but I've come to accept that my feelings for this one are largely nostalgia-based. Nostalgia for watching it as a kid, but also nostalgia for the franchise in general, because this film and the first are so closely linked in my mind. Ghostbusters 2 is set only five years after the original movie, yet somehow the city is inexplicably turned against the Ghostbusters again, not believing in their capabilities. It's a frustrating setup, made all the more frustrating by a ghostly portrait threat and the incredibly annoying Janish. It's not a super uncommon thing, but this sequel is very much a rehash of the original movie. There are some minor changes to the story and a few alterations to the character dynamics, but really, this is pretty much another telling of Ghostbusters, from Dana's ghostly problem all the way to a giant supernatural being stomping its way through New York City. Everything's familiar, which can be good for the nostalgia side, but does end up making everything feel a bit too predictable. If you've seen the original movie, this one gets a little repetitive, and is certainly less interesting and less charming as a result. But there's still plenty of fun to be had here, and this movie's got some extremely memorable moments, some of which rival those in the original film. Things like the Slime River, the Ghostly Train, and of course, Libby. Right, Ziggy? Yo! Coming in at number three, 
Ghostbusters Frozen Empire. A sequel to a legacy sequel, this movie had the potential to go a couple different ways, but ended up just being very middle of the road. It's a follow-up continuation of Afterlife that's enjoyable, but definitely struggles. It's very obviously pulled between delivering a new story with the newer characters and giving fans the nostalgia that they crave. Much more so than its predecessor, Frozen Empire is a film that really struggles to find the right balance between new and old. The components are all fine, it just gets awkwardly stuck in the middle. There are way too many characters and plot lines here, which splits the film's focus and makes everything seem a bit underdeveloped. The split focus also affects the pacing, so the movie ends up feeling a bit long, but also somehow rushed at the same time. The overall tone here is definitely a bit more serious than we've seen in past films, but this sequel does deliver on some things that were lacking in its predecessor, including moving the story back to New York City. Most of the original characters are frustratingly underutilized again, but Ray gets a much more involved role here, and you can tell Dan Aykroyd is having a lot of fun with it. Just like with Afterlife, Phoebe Spangler is the heart of this film. McKenna Grace might not get top billing here, but she's definitely the main character. And the continued teen Ghostbuster perspective yields some interesting storylines that feel unique for the franchise. This movie expands on the franchise lore a bit, and of course still gives us a good deal of ghostbusting fun, with plenty of nostalgic callbacks and easter eggs for franchise fans to sink their teeth into. Frozen Empire isn't as playful or emotional as the other films in this franchise, but it's still an enjoyable and perfectly serviceable sequel. Coming in at number 2, Ghostbusters Afterlife. As far as legacy sequels are concerned, this was a movie that was done mostly right. It's a very fun, nostalgia-fueled film that I think was able to capture the tone of the original movie remarkably well. It's got that occasionally creepy, fun sci-fi vibe down, and certainly leans into all of the expected nostalgia. But luckily, this movie doesn't come across as just fanservice. Sure, we've got cameos and the Ectomobile and even the Stay Puffed Marshmallow Man, but those things don't just pop up for the sake of popping up, like we sometimes see in Frozen Empire. There's actual story and plot reasons behind it all. Some of it may be a little overly convenient at times, but hey, that's always been part of Ghostbusters. Unlike the 2016 film, this movie is very much a sequel to the original films. It continues the story, and on paper, it technically serves as a Ghostbusters 3, but in practice, it's more of a Ghostbusters The Next Generation. It's a revival for the new era that directly ties itself to the past. In fact, it more than just ties, it very blatantly transposes plot elements directly from the original film. It makes sense within this story's logic, and it's a well done bit of nostalgia, but it does close the film on perhaps too familiar of a note. But even with that familiarity, this was an incredibly enjoyable, and at times heartfelt, sequel that manages to deliver a little bit of everything in order to satisfyingly merge old and new to revive this supernatural franchise. So that means my number one Ghostbusters film is Ghostbusters, the 1984 original. Well, who else are you gonna call as number one? The original Ghostbusters is so bizarre. It's a very strange mix of comedy, sci-fi, romance, and a little horror that really had no business becoming an internationally recognized cultural phenomenon. But it did, and I'm glad, because this is an exceptionally enjoyable movie. That said, as much as I like it, and as much nostalgia as I have for it, I've never considered myself to be a super fan. And I definitely think there are issues with this movie, ones that stick out to me every time I watch it, even despite all the nostalgia. After a fun and breezy first act, and part of the second act, the pacing grinds to a halt, and the story gets very bizarrely convoluted, especially as things move towards the more interdimensional god side of the story. In spite of some issues I have with the storyline, though, it's the premise that's always grabbed me. The Ghostbusters actually ghostbusting? is by far my favorite aspect of this film. Even as a kid, watching their process was always so interesting to me. The action and proton packs and all of that was fun, but I really liked the kind of pseudoscience elements of it all, like the traps and the bigger containment unit. There was just so much thought and creativity put into designing this world and this business. And then on top of that, we've got the cast and this extremely memorable set of characters. This movie is supremely quotable and really 
think everything about it is in the consciousness and lexicon of pop culture now. It's all so incredibly iconic. The theme song, the ectomobile, and of course, my personal favorite, the Stay Puffed Marshmallow Man. All right, so that's my rankography of the Ghostbusters franchise. Five movies, two timelines, and an awful lot of ectoplasm. What does your ranking look like? I'd love to see some reasoning for your order, so be sure to post it in the comments below. Remember, I've already reviewed all five of these movies, so you could check those videos out if you want some more in-depth discussion of each, as well as my ratings, pros and cons, and even tailored film recommendations. And if you're interested in buying any of these movies, I do have affiliate links for all of them in the description below. I get a small commission from anything you buy in one of my links, so I'd really appreciate it if you'd use them if you're in the market for any of these movies. All right, so if you got some enjoyment, insight, or information out of this rankography, I'd appreciate it if you'd hit that like button. And if you haven't done so already, please hit subscribe if you're at it to see more videos like this, as well as movie reviews. Till next time, this has been Alyssa with Mainly Movies. The way life should be.